Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to do some easy fashion illustrations inspired by the work of Erte, one of the most prominent fashion illustrators of the Art Deco period. He also did costumes for silent films, which are often very dramatic, so you can really get creative with this project. Today we're going to focus on drawing a character with her pet. I'm doing a poodle for the example, but you can use whatever animal you want. And we're going to kind of make the costume match the elements of the pet that she's walking. So again, you can get really creative and fun with this. This would be a great activity to do with kids. I know when I was a kid, I loved doing little drawings, designing my own outfits. So you can really have fun with this and the characteristics of Art Deco design are a lot of simple shapes, not a lot of shading, very geometric, kind of down to the basics with a lot of extravagant creative flourishes that are not too hard to draw though. So this should be something that everyone can try despite whether you're a big drawer or not. Aside from silent film designs, Erte also designed his own jewelry and did interior design as well. So he was kind of all over the board. For the purposes of this video, I've done a light pencil outline first already. So you can go ahead and follow along with me and do your pencil outline first as well and then go over it with the pen if that would be easier. So the first thing I'm doing is making an oval shape for the head. Again, just a simple shape with a point on the bottom for the chin. Then I'm going ahead and on each side making some sloping lines for the shoulders. Then I'm curving some other lines down for the arms. Again, simple shapes, not a lot of definition. Just a simple kind of hook shaped form for the hand, just in, not needing to do individual fingers, just implying the shape. A curved hourglass shape for the basic body on each side. And then for my dress, I chose to bell out on the bottom and kind of a mermaid style dress. Now for the dog, the head, we're really just doing this simple shape as well. It's kind of an anvil shape for the head. I'm going across um, for the where the legs come out, we're just doing some U shapes. Just a lot of curves to make the body more straight, just hook shapes for the legs. Again, very simple. leaving space for some little cloud shapes because we are making a poodle, so just for fun. And I'm just adding a little bow around the neck. And as I said, I'm kind of making her costume mimic her pet. So I'm going ahead and adding some fluff on the edge of her gloves and along the top shoulder area of her dress as well. And I decided to have her wearing a cape that matches her dress. Again, just to go with kind of the style of that time period and just add something fun. Just a simple line for the leash. And then curving around, again, going with the Art Deco style of geometric shapes. I'm just adding a fun swirl to where her cape curves behind her geometric patterns are very popular. All we need to do for definition on the dress is just add some lines where the fabric would bunch a little bit. Again, just simple lines, not really doing any shading. And then I'm also adding some of my fluff edging to the bottom of her dress to finish it off. A couple more simple lines just to show the fabric design some simple half circles for the ears and I'm adding some little puffball earrings again to kind of match with the poodle and for her hair I also am doing a hairstyle that kind of matches with the poodle's ears adding a bow to match his bow the faces are also very simple so just basic almond shapes for the eyes with a black circle in the middle I made the eyebrows go down connecting to the nose, again going with a geometric look, 
and I'm just putting two dots on the bottom of those lines to indicate the bottom of the nose. And just a basic shape for the lips as well. Heart shape on top, a curve on the bottom with just a straight line down the middle. And can't forget about the poodle's tail. And now we can start shading it in. Again, with Art Deco Design, there's not a lot of light to dark shading. It really is just filling it in with solid color for the most part, which makes it really simple and you get a really nice dramatic effect at the end just from the blocks of bold color. So you can go ahead and fill in her skin first using whatever shade you want. I'm using a light mocha brown for this design. When you're shading, it's often easier with markers to outline the boundary you want to fill in first so that when you're coloring back and forth, you don't accidentally fly outside the lines. And then from there, you want to fill it in going layering over mostly in all the same direction as much as you can. And that's going to make your coverage more even no matter what type of marker you're using. Now I'm just adding to the dress. I'm leaving my dress white to match my poodle. You could be really fun and I said make your animal whatever color you want. Get creative. But I'm just leaving mine white. And I am adding a little bit of definition, going with some light gray just over the lines that are already there. Again, not a lot of detailed shading, but just a little bit to add some shape to it and not leave it just plain white. And you don't even necessarily have to do this step because not all of Urte's drawings, even in areas that were left white, had shading like this. But again, we're really being inspired by his style of designs, but you don't need to do everything exactly how he would have done it. You want to add your own artistic flair to it as well. Now I'm just coloring in the lips using a fine point since it's a really small area. And then I'm going ahead and bringing that color into the bow as well. With these illustrations, I'm going with the theme of not only fashion design, but interior design. Um, color palette was very important. He didn't use every color in the entire world in one drawing. Typically, he chose a couple core colors for a specific color scheme like you would in other types of design and went with that for the whole illustration. Now I'm just adding a little bit more simple shading like I did on the dress for where there's some ripples in the fabric just so we can tell what's going on. And so I'm going with a darker gray because I'm going to go over this with another color of marker instead of leaving it white so I want it to show through the other color of ink that I put over it. Just shading in and put it, I just added some streaks wherever we have the lines for where the fabric is rippling. And now I'm going over this with my bright red as well. Again, I'm just making sure to trace around areas like her arm and her dress first and then fill in just to make sure that as I'm shading back and forth, I don't accidentally slip and end up coloring into somewhere where I don't want the red. For areas that are really thin, you want to hold your marker at almost a 90 degree angle so you're just touching with the point. And that'll help you be able to fill in a really small, fine area like that.
I'm going around her earrings, which again are just little short streaks along the outside of that circle to give it the look of the little fuzzy puff balls. I remember when those earrings were kind of a thing, um, maybe last year, a couple years ago. So we're bringing them back. Now I'm filling in her hair. I'm getting kind of fun and I'm doing a, it was called blue slate. So it's kind of a fun, like grayish, bluish purple color. Just to bring in another color besides a neutral. I'm also going along the top of her eye and giving her some more makeup, adding some light blue eyeshadow. And now keeping with the color scheme, I'm trying to bring each color I use into more than one element of the drawing to bring everything together. I'm also going with this light blue around the outside. Just to add some color to the background. Often with Erte's illustrations and fashion illustrations in general, the background will just be a brush of solid color because the emphasis is on the figure and their outfit and jewelry, not so much on what's going on in the background, but you could also add a pattern to the background. Whatever you want to do, it's your picture. Thank you for drawing with me. Anyone who tried out this project, I'd love to see your designs. If you want to leave a picture in the comments on Creative 360's Facebook page, that'd be fantastic. We'd love to see what you've been up to. I'm planning to do another lesson inspired by Erte based more on the extravagant silent film style costumes, so be sure to check back for that. Thank you again.